Nerd Reactor, roll out. What's up, Reactorites? It's John here, and I have a very special guest, Narvin. How's it going? And he's, he's a big Microsoft Xbox fan. <laughs> this is a perfect video for that, because we just came out of the Xbox briefing, and we also checked out the EA Live, so we got to see a bunch of new games. So this will kind of be like our update on what's happening at E3 and what we enjoyed. And I guess the first thing is the uh, Microsoft briefing. It's over. What are you most excited about? Um, you know, yes, I am a big Xbox fan because I play solely, pretty much mostly on Xbox. Uh huh. But uh, the Halo teaser was good. Yeah. I mean, but it was just a teaser. That's all it was. Yeah. Um, Gears looks good, but I think the most excited I am, for, or the thing I'm most excited about, Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk 2077. Wow. Well, so what about the trailer that caught your attention? Um, I think everything. I was a big fan of Deus Ex, mm -hmm. and it feels very similar to Deus Ex, but uh, not just that, but everything about the, most of the stuff about the game has been under wraps for the most part, right? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's like we have a, a trailer, mm -hmm. and then some little tidbits here and there, but not much is known about Cyberpunk other than it's based on the, uh, the uh, pen and paper game, and... yeah. And now here, we don't get to see the gameplay. It's a cinematic trailer, but you kind of get a tease of what, um, you know, gamers can anticipate. Yeah, what, what you expect to see in the world and uh, experience, you know, all the different, uh, what is it? There's gangs, there's... Uh, there's a party sure. life. Yeah. Uh, there's just a lot of different just action and violence happening all over the city. And at the end, he's... Uh, this this character is in a car, so does that mean we get to drive around yeah. in the city? If that's the case, this is, this is gonna be awesome. Yeah, and that's uh, wow, cars, open world. So this could be like Grand Theft Auto, but cyberpunk cyber, setting. Cyberpunk setting, yeah. yeah. By CD Projekt Red. But I don't think it's gonna be. There's gonna be like a lot of cars, like because Grand Theft Auto is all about the cars driving yeah. around. Here, you're gonna have to like go out and just venture and check out the uh, the world. So I, I'm interested to see how they do that because in Witcher 3, it's open world, but to travel faster, you do have Roach, your horse. Yeah, you have your horse. And, right? yeah. uh, you know, CD Projekt Red, they developed Witcher 3 and in this one. So horse is slower, so the game engine can kind of handle that, like just roaming around, but a car can go fast. So I, have, I really have no idea what's going to happen. Would this mean an even bigger world? Yeah, might be, might be. Like, I think they did mention this is going to be a bigger world than Witcher 3. Um, so uh, if you guys know, let me know because uh, I don't know it off, off the top of my head. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? What are you most excited for? Uh, besides, I, I have, besides Cyberpunk, Cyberpunk. <laughs> that is my top two. But other than that, I did like the the uh, Division 2 demo. Ooh, yes. And just seeing that, just because I, I enjoyed d the first Division uh, just playing it, and just the city of Manhattan, it's like there's a lot of death to it. And, uh, you know, once it's over, I was kind of sad. And I wish the ending was, uh, there was like an actual conclusion in the base game. Uh, but I enjoyed it a lot more than, let's say, another game where it's co-op. I'm not going to mention it. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder... Yeah, yeah. Is it a four-player co-op game? Uh, there, there is also four players, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Set in possibly jungles? I don't know. Partially? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Um, Xbox, this presentation, I think it's really fun. It's uh, your focus on games. So it's just games after games after yeah. games. Exclusives, launch exclusives, and just multi-platform type games. But they get the world premiere. And so we get, like, Shadow. Shadow of the Tomb, Tomb Raider. Raider. Uh, Division 2, obviously. Um, Kingdom Hearts 3. Kingdom Hearts 3. That was huge. Yeah. Coming to Xbox. That's like, that's unheard of. This uh, is Kingdom Hearts was... It's, it's kind of like reverse with uh, Mass Effect 3 coming to PS4. So it's, it's kind of like that. It's it's But it's big. Yeah. It's, it's big for, for that console. These like, games are big, though. They yeah. need to be available on all platforms. Yeah. And I like that trailer just because of the Utada Hikaru song. And, you know, a lot of fans are like, oh, is she going to return? And here she is, and you get to hear the song, and Frozen's in it, Tangled's yeah. in it. Uh, it's, this is like the Avengers Infinity War. Wreck-It Ralph. Wreck-It Ralph, Ralph and all that. Yeah. 
Yeah. The biggest crossover event ever. But they did this in the first Kingdom Hearts game, too, when it crossed over. continued. <laughs> yes. continued. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, then we have other other just announcements. Uh, yeah, Gears of War 5, Gears of War 5. had kind of like a story element where you get to see Kate, one of the main characters. I wonder if she's going to be the main character you're going to play, or is it going to switch off to others? It's going to go back to Dell or JD, or when you play as Marcus. Come on! People <laughs> want to play as Marcus! You know? Marcus, he's top dog. He's kind of an ancillary character now. I yeah. mean, especially like going from part four. But uh, Deep down, you want to play as Marcus. I do. Yeah. I, I do. I really do. Uh, but I'm interested to see what path she takes based on what happened at the end of uh, Gears of War four, and you know I'm not gonna spoil it for anybody. I'm not gonna say what happens. Yes, yeah. it's, it's a little. It's it's not like crazy now this world, but it's it's enough to where you're like, wait a second. Yeah, and I kind of like this trailer just because it's it's not really focused on the action. They do show some action at the end of the trailer, but it's more on the story. And I never seen them really focus on a story like this before. Before it's always like, oh, here's a action creature. And uh, what's going to happen? Yeah, action. But here, what's going to happen? Why does she want to... Or expose. Yeah. Why does she want to like do the stuff and uh, go AWOL, kind of? Is she going to get in trouble or not? Or they're we'll, all, we'll see. They're all backing her up yeah. anyway. <laughs> Just I mean, it, you catch a glimpse of like a lot of the newer creatures that yeah. they come across as well. And uh, new locations as well. And it looks beautiful. So. I know another thing that you, uh, during the presentation, you were excited about. Um, Forza Horizon. Yes, Forza Horizon Four. Yeah. Um, yes, I know racing games can feel very, I don't know, generic. I mean, you figure if you played one racing game, you played them all. Yeah. Um, but go ahead. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the, the Forza series has probably been the only thing to rival the Gran Turismo series yeah. on Xbox as opposed to you know yeah. PlayStation. But um, Horizon is the more slightly arcadey version of. Um, of uh, racing simulators, yes. <laughs> it's the more. It's, it's still a horizon. simulator, but it's yeah. it's still geared more towards like the arcadey aspect. Yeah, it's not like uh, what is it, Outrun or uh, Crazy <laughs> Taxi? <laughs> that's it's, arcade. It's, that's, that's like really far out racing. <laughs> but yes. yeah, you know, it's it's a little bit more arcadey. It's not as arcadey as like Need for Speed. Yeah, but um, you could still have like precision racing mixed in with arcade. And I think the biggest thing for this game is. Uh, most ga- a lot of games, racing games nowadays, have dynamic weather. And yeah. that's a big thing. You know, oh, it starts raining, it starts snowing. This has dynamic seasons. Yeah. And this is something completely new uh, I haven't seen in a racing game yet. And I've played a good amount of racing games. And dynamic seasons adds a whole new aspect to the game. Because they were saying, you know, let's say this lake during summer is, is a normal lake. Yeah. But in the winter, it's all frozen over. Yeah. And you can access different areas now. So I'm well, wondering, like, I'm, oh. I'm watching the trailer. They're driving on top of the frozen lake. What if there's like a crack? And you just like <laughs> you just go in. I wouldn't be surprised. You know what? Yeah. I, I can I can see that happening. I wouldn't. Be I don't. Surprised with I don't think it would do that though because it would just reset you. Yeah, reset and Forza and Gran Turismo are the type of racing simulators where the automakers don't want their cars. Well, that would be Forza Motorsport with mm-hmm. Horizon. Uh, I think it'll be okay. Yeah, you think so? Yeah, because well, uh, Horizon kind of embodies more the crazy element Mm -hmm. because uh one of the dlcs that they had uh recently well not recently but within the last year was the hot wheels tracks yeah so they literally have this entire island that was made of hot wheels tracks and you're riding driving around a base basically a hot wheels track which is pretty cool you know it's something you you manage you know if you were a kid playing around with little hot wheels cars and a little track you imagine oh this would be awesome to drive on yeah and you get to do that in horizon three so i think in four that wouldn't be too out of its realm yeah um but it wouldn't be like grand theft auto where cars would explode oh well yeah and no. you would just hit a car it would just be dented all over, no. and yeah, it's. But but there there is cosmetic damage. Cosmetic you do damage. Get the, yeah, you do so get some of the automakers are okay. Like, okay, you can you can damage yeah. your car. Yeah. yeah. That's why Ferrari wasn't in, or sorry, Porsche wasn't in a lot of games. So they, they were like, they didn't no, want to see, yeah, no, yeah, no did. dents. <laughs> but in real life, it might be a different story. Yeah. <laughs> you get a sledgehammer, bam, <laughs> and you're and, done. And then I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but. The I'm surprised about just Halo. They just announced, you know, Halo Infinite. Halo and Infinite. It's just it's just like a an announcement, nothing more. Yeah. And just a little tease. So just a little tease, just a little, a little bit. Three four three industries. 
Um, so we'll, we'll see where that goes. And speaking of well, not just three four three with uh, Microsoft Studios acquiring five different studios. Yeah, that's pretty big. I mean, Playground is one of them who makes Forza, uh, Forza Horizon. Sorry. Um, they acquired uh, what was the other ones? Uh, the one that did we, uh, you know, We Happy Few. I, yeah, I think that was Compulsion Games. Yes. But the shocker, the biggest shocker for me was Ninja Theory. Yeah. Because Ninja Theory was like making games exclusive to Sony. Yeah. With Heavenly Sword, and now it's like <laughs> Microsoft. Now they're so, under Microsoft. Yeah. So what are you gonna do? Like Heaven's Heaven's Blade, or uh, Hell's <laughs> Hell's Blade? <laughs> Hell Blade. <laughs> Uh, it's, Wait, isn't Hellblade? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's crazy. And <laughs> uh, Hellblade, uh, yeah, uh, the game Hellblade. <laughs> it's it's out. I played it. I wasn't a big fan of it, but I did like the kind of like the cinematic stuff they've done, and the uh, they want you to wear headphones so you can really feel like you're tormented with the, hearing the immersion voices. In it. yeah and uh but i still i still appreciate what ninja theory has done mm-hmm. and i want to see what they can do uh with just you know triple a stuff under a different publisher now yeah under microsoft yeah and definitely looking forward to uh we, we got to see crackdown 3 I know they've been showing it, what, the past two E3s, I'd say, that, that they've kind of teased it. I think we've seen a bit more this time than the past times. Mm-hmm. But now we have a hard date yeah. of February. Uh, well, February 2019. But they haven't given an exact date in February. But still, that's better than it was before. <laughs> um, definitely looking forward to that one. I've been waiting for so long mm-hmm. on this game. I mean... Fully destructible environments. I mean, everything. Everything you can... Uh, it's fully destructible. Yeah. You can blow up. Um, and I believe it's co-op, possibly four-player. I know okay. it's definitely two-player. See, so that's cool with the co-op and just having a friend blow up everything with you. And Terry Crews. <laughs> yeah. You couldn't find anybody better than Terry Crews yeah. to promote that game. Especially oh, yeah. that the, they, they fashioned the character after him. Yeah, he looks just like him. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, that. And then we also have the uh, Just Cause. Just Cause 4. Rico. Rico yeah, is back. so he's back. See, that's like the only game where or franchise I know that they really bring him back, the character. Because other games, when they bring mm-hmm. in a new game, like Grand Theft Auto, as far as new characters, Far Cry, new characters. yeah. yeah. Um, and these are like sandbox, you know, open world type games, new characters. But here, Rico, Rico it's like he's, he's consistently he's there. Consistently there, yeah. And it's it's just crazy how they just uh, uh, like using his character. Like, let's uh, should we create a new character? No, Rico. Let's just use Rico. Why not? Zoom. It's good. Yeah. And uh, we also went to EA. EA Play. EA Play, uh, and that's like their little side thing because they're not inside E3. Yeah, and they, they showed some stuff. Uh, you know, like you got some uh, new uh, NBA Live. You have, yeah, Madden, uh, another Madden, Madden FIFA. Battlefront Two, new season with uh, Solo. Yeah, but the two main games we want to talk about: Anthem and Battlefield Five. Yes, and let's talk about Anthem. It looked beautiful. It yeah. was a gorgeous looking game. Uh, they showed more of the the four player co op. Uh, we got a seventeen minute. Uh, presentation. It was a it was a live demo that they it was had. a live demo. Yeah, it was a live demo that we got to see. Um, it displayed three out of the four classes. I think it was like Juggernaut or Juggernaut or Colossus. I think Colossus is one Colossus. of them. I think yeah. And it, uh, the Ranger. Uh, I think it's. Just I don't. Ranger. I don't remember the names. I think of it's the just Ranger. Other classes, but uh, they look different. Yeah, there's Storm and uh, I forgot what the last one was. Mm-hmm. The the last one is the one that we didn't see, but uh, I guess the easiest way is to explain is what the. Just imagine if Bioware did a Destiny type game. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, you but look, you can fly. Yeah, you, you, it's like you you're like Iron Man. Yeah, flying around. And some of the outfits are bulky. Some are very skinny. Or Depending tall. on which uh, class you go with. Yeah, and I'm hoping I'm hoping Bioware can pull this off because a lot of people that I know are like, oh, this is kind of like Destiny, and I don't want it to be like Destiny. Uh, I personally. I want more. Kind of like Destiny, I felt like the content is was lacking. Was lacking. Yeah. I want I want a lore and a story that I can get behind on, and I'm hoping that Anthem can do that. But uh, so far, they've been showing just gameplay stuff, not too much of the uh, story. 
which I'm okay with because mm-hmm. I don't want them to go too deep on the story to show it out right away. Mm-hmm. But uh, here's the thing with the previous Bioware games, like Mass Effect, when they show gameplay trailers or footage demonstrations, they show stories, but they're like side missions, so you don't really okay. get ruined by it, but you get to see the uh, amount of data or uh, the amount of story that's being packed into these type of games and their choices that you make will affect future uh, events. And we'll see if that gets included. I mean, I really hope that they do include that in there. Um, yeah, Bioware, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I I feel like some of the gameplay was very Mass Effect-ish mm-hmm. uh, in terms of, you know, depending on what class you go with and what classes you're working with with your teammates, Yeah, uh, you can combo with your powers. Um, you know, there was, uh, I think it was a ranger, the Storm, Storm was like a warlock-looking character. Um was able to freeze the enemies, and then the Colossus was able to shoot, I think it was a mortar, and it comboed the uh, the abilities together to do more damage to the enemies. Yeah. Very, very much like in Mass Effect, when you combo, like, biotic abilities with, um, what, with, I guess, kinetic or tech powers, um, or biotic with biotic, you get, you know, the biotic explosions and whatnot. So I do like that aspect of it, so hopefully we see that a little bit more expanded down the line. Yeah, uh, that's releasing in February as well. It's a lot of games just coming out. 2019. Yeah, early 2019, and uh, the game Battlefield Five that's going to come out. Was that's it this in year? October. Yeah, I believe. And so we got a chance to play like an hour and a half of the game. Yeah, almost we, two hours. We played Grand Operation. So for, you know, this uh, this is World War Two, and for me to sum it up, it's just like Battlefield One, but World War Two. And if you're a fan of Battlefield One, that would should be great, uh, just because it's, uh, you know, it's just they got to do some tweaks and the core gameplay is there. I, I can say, I, like for me, I I I still play Battlefield One. I've been a Battlefield fan for quite. A, I've played every Battlefield that there is. Um, I feel like the gameplay is a lot quick, faster mm-hmm. in comparison to Battlefield One. Um, I do like the way the weapons feel, mm-hmm. but I think everything in general moves a bit quicker. Yeah. Um, there, there are some funny bugs in the game. It's <laughs> well, still like pre, it was a pre-alpha Pre-alpha. Build. It was a pre-alpha build. Uh, so, but I just want to talk about the bugs because they're funny. <laughs> There's like dead bodies and they're, the whole body's twitching. Yeah, you see it like twitching. And I found myself shooting at some of those bodies yeah, thinking it was an actual person. Yeah, because I wasn't sure if the body's dead or they're just prone. Yeah. And sometimes it was just a guy that's prone but it's glitchy. So when I was shooting it, just to make sure, yeah. I got a kill like confirmation. So, oh, that guy was alive. <laughs> And, but yeah, it's just uh, Grand Operation is back, so it's just like an epic of just two sides fighting each other, pushing each other forward and backwards. It's it's expanded on the operations mode from Battlefield One. Um, this time, I think there's more uh, objectives that you can do. Uh, mm-hmm. Before it was just you either you could V for control on a control point and you push back push forward and at the very end you have like a rush type yeah. uh, game play to where you just have to arm or disarm two uh, objectives whereas this one it's by day because mm-hmm. we played like day one day two and mm-hmm. day three yeah. and it was different pieces of that campaign yeah. which I found that was pretty cool I mean there was different like there was one objective to where uh, we were defending the entire time which mm-hmm. I really wish we could have played the other side too um, but they the enemy had to come in and destroy our 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 artillery guns. Wow, yeah, that's a mouthful. Uh, <laughs> um, but that that's like one of the one of the objectives. But if they destroy it, then we get pushed back to two control points that we have to hold from yeah. there. So it was like a lot of that. And then the next map we did was like day two, and then day three. Um, another new aspect of that game I noticed was the building. You can build barriers yeah so it kind of reminds me of Fortnite, where you're you can fight <laughs> but then you can also build at the same time yeah and i mean granted these are not big walls but there's they're barriers enough to block like vehicles and such they can get blown out yeah but it'll take someone with dynamite or something or a tank blowing up blowing it up or whatnot but uh, i think that adds a, a nice new aspect to the game so yeah it would be kind of similar to siege where you can fortify yeah certain areas and squad Squad's back, like squad of four. You can respawn on your squad mates. Yep. Uh, you you can also. Uh, I don't know. I lost my train of thought. So <laughs> just... uh, there's there's um, you don't have to rely on someone being support or medic 
mm-hmm. order to heal or give you ammo. There are actually certain spots within the map that you can go go and get ammo and health from. Yeah. Uh, you could pick up health from downed enemies whenever you kill somebody. They drop health, so you can actually get help that way. Yeah. Um, but I think one of the biggest things that they they announced they didn't show it yet was their battle royale mode that yeah. they have. So, so that's gonna be. It's going to be, yeah, so you got that, and then, you know, you got other games, Call of Duty calling out for Battle Royale, yeah. so Battle Royale is a thing, and... Gears of War, I believe, will be having a Battle Royale. So if you're into that, yay, if not, you'll be like, oh, no, another game announcing Battle Royale, everyone's trying to be like Fortnite or uh, <laughs> PUBG, and blah, 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 yada, 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 and... Yeah, but yeah, if you're but this is just more modes, so more yeah. modes can't really hurt, right? Like, I, I, I don't mind that, because it's... You don't have to play. It's, that's not the core of the gameplay. It's not like yeah. this is the only thing you can play. You know what? If I don't want to do the battle royale, I could do the regular conquest mode, or I could do war stories. Yeah, which See, I really. Yeah, this has war stories. Yeah. It has like your your the multiplayer that mm. uh, players have known from before, and uh, let's say for Call of Duty, they're doing multiplayer <sighs> and battle royale, but they won't have the single player campaign, right? Some that do they. I thought they have a single player, too. Do for have? this one. For Call of Duty... Uh, Black Ops 4? There's no campaign? I don't think so. That's terrible. <laughs> yeah. So, but here, it's different. Different story. Yeah. But, yeah. So, those are our thoughts on the uh, updates. Or, you know, just E3 with EA and Xbox. And so, videos, reaction videos, if you're watching that, uh, it might be uh, limited. Uh, so bear with me. We'll, bear with we'll me. be at E3 this entire week. Yeah. So with that said, I'm John. I'm Narvin. And we'll see you guys next time.